My name is Brian Sanctuary, and I would like to tell you what I like about quantum mechanics in this, my first submission to this blog. Now, the purpose of this blog is to stimulate discussion into the interpretation of quantum mechanics. I am sure that you have ideas, questions, comments about quantum mechanics, and reactions to what I say. I invite you to submit those in my blog, and perhaps we can stimulate a lively discussion and even get some answers as to what quantum mechanics really means. But let's go back to what I like best about quantum mechanics, and that's easy. It's the insight. It's the deep insight that quantum mechanics gives us into the microscopic world. Now, we live in a macroscopic world, which is governed by classical or Newtonian mechanics. If someone tosses you a ball, you intuitively put up your hand and catch that ball. You don't have to understand classical mechanics. You don't have to calculate a trajectory. You don't need to know anything about forces or gravity. You simply intuitively put up your hand and catch the ball. Now, in the microscopic world, things are different. The microscopic world is governed by a different mechanics, and that is quantum mechanics. And the only way we can get insight into the microscopic world is through understanding the mathematical equations. I think Heisenberg said it first. He was one of the founders of quantum mechanics, and he said that our ability to visualize in the microscopic world, to gain intuition, to understand microscopic processes, can only come from understanding the mathematical equations that govern quantum mechanics. Now, I'm not suggesting that you become a mathematician. Far from it. There are many people who understand quantum mechanics who aren't mathematicians. They work with it daily, and they develop an intuition as to how the microscopic world works. So they don't have to do long, complicated calculations. They know what happens at the microscopic level. So if somebody tosses them an electron, they know how to catch it. The chemical bond can only be described by quantum mechanics. It is a 100% quantum entity. Think of all the chemical bonds that are being made and broken every day throughout the world, throughout the universe. They are all governed by the laws of quantum mechanics. Another thing I like about quantum mechanics is that it can predict properties that don't exist in our macroscopic world, such as spin. An electron is a particle with a certain mass, a certain charge, and a spin of one half magnitude. It is a 100% quantum entity with no analog in the macroscopic world. The hydrogen atom also has a spin of one half, which resonates. This spin is smaller than that of an electron, but it is still the same sort of angular momentum. Other particles have spin as well. Carbon-13 has a spin of one half. A chlorine atom has a spin of three halves. Photons have a spin of one. Many particles have spin, and today sophisticated instruments have been developed to look at the resonances of many particles, and this is called nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, or NMR for short. These instruments and spectrometers, and many others like them, give a spectrum, and these spectrum can all be understood by applying the laws of quantum mechanics. That is, the position and the intensities of all these lines are completely determined by quantum mechanics. Now, this molecule down here is a particularly simple molecule, but by understanding such spectra, we can obtain important properties of molecules, such as structure, function, and reactivity. Now, NMR started way back in the 1940s when scientists were simply interested to see if they could make the spin of a proton resonate. This was fundamental research. This was good science. And the two people credited with the discovery of NMR, Felix Bloch and Purcell Pound, had no idea of the tremendous consequences of their initial experiments. They did not know about chemical shifts and that NMR would develop into one of the most useful tools to many areas of scientific research. And today we have magnetic resonance imaging, MRI that allows us to non-invasively look inside the body with great benefit to humankind and, of course, medical research too. Quantum mechanics, therefore, is the basis for our understanding and control of the microscopic world. Think of microelectronics. We have microprocessors all around us, based primarily on solid-state physics. Think of new materials, new fabrics, new plastics, new polymers, all developed in laboratories by scientists doing chemistry or engineering who understand how the quantum world works and are able to create these new materials. 
Nanotechnology is a relatively new field of research with tremendous potential. A nanometer is 10 to the minus 9 meters. We know that particles and molecules can self-assemble into larger structures. But scientists can intervene in these processes to assemble the sorts of structures that can do different things. Here we see a nanotube, but there are many more that can perform different tasks like nano-sized machines. Today, with the use of powerful computers, it's possible to solve the Schrodinger equation to obtain the structures of complicated molecules. Here we see hemoglobin. Such structures allow scientists to understand how complicated molecules function. There are many beautiful structures of proteins. In biochemistry and pharmacology, for example, scientists can study various biochemical pathways and can intervene in these to control them and even stop them when something goes wrong, like cancer. So quantum mechanics gives us deep insight into how the microscopic world works. I've talked about chemistry, physics, biochemistry, pharmacology, and many other branches of science. And the ideas that come from this fundamental research, like the example of the resonating hydrogen atom, can be taken over by engineering and companies that do research and development. This leads to new processes and new products which can benefit mankind. But what does quantum mechanics mean? What is the real meaning of the, of the wave function? What are the real consequences of quantum mechanics? How can non-locality happen? Is nature really entangled? Is nature fundamentally statistical? Well, these questions have been debated since quantum mechanics was first formulated in the 1920s with no real resolution. Today, however, many of the Gedanken or thought experiments of those days can be performed in the laboratory, which gives us new insight. However, quantum mechanics is so successful that I believe the vast majority of people don't care about the real meaning of quantum mechanics anymore. It has been debated for so long that, it has been, that people have given up. It has been debated since the beginning of quantum time with no real clear resolution. So they continue to use quantum mechanics in their research and are happy to leave it at that. I think the famous Nobel Prize winner Richard Feynman summed it up best. He obtained his Nobel Prize for formulating quantum mechanics using what is now called the Feynman Path Integral Approach. And about the foundations of quantum mechanics, Richard Feynman is purported to have said, perhaps with his tongue in his cheek, shut up and calculate. However, I believe, and I'm sure that Professor Feynman believed it too, that these questions are fundamental to our understanding of the microscopic world. We should not give up trying to find the answers. Well, that's what all, all I have for this first submission. Next time I want to talk a bit about how scientists approach problems and some of the philosophical consequences of quantum mechanics. And after that, I will tell you what I don't like about quantum mechanics.